Hi everyone, I'm James, I'm an architect, so I run a small practice and I work, we're working with Leo. Hello, my name is Leo, um, I'm uh, an advertising guy, I'm currently working at the BBC. Um, and yeah, Jim and I have been working on a few different projects, um, looking at the sort of interaction between um, brands, culture, advertising and architecture. and um, we thought that working from home provided such a fascinating uh, topic that we ought to do something about it. Uh, okay. Hello. Over to you, Leo. Let's do this. Cool. All right. Well, so look, originally we wanted to um, ask everyone to come off mute uh, and do a big hello from all corners of the, uh, of the country and possibly even the, the world. Uh, who knows? But, um, you know, Maybe give yourself a round of applause and a whatever at home. Um, from your do that quickly. I could unmute everyone quickly. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah, let's okay, do that. So, we want to unmute everyone. everyone. And then on three. Okay. On three, we want everyone to. Three. Everyone's muted. Oh. 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 Very nice. Right, welcome everyone. Uh, I don't know how many. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Oh, I'm paused. We're paused. Sorry, okay. you're back now. You're, you're back, back now. You're back. So yeah, thank you all for, for tuning in and, and spending your lunch times with us. Um, we hope that this will be a fun and uh, interactive session on um, one of, uh, well, one of the many topics um, that we're all talking about these days. Um, because of course we are um, living in a really extraordinary time. Um, the situation has forced everyone to experience, of course, um, lots of hardship and tragedy that uh, can't be underestimated. Um, at all, um, but it has also forced us to experience many realities that we had um, sort of only really entertained as as possibilities uh, before. And one of those is, of course, uh, working from home all the time. Um, and today's session is really a chance to explore uh, this this new uh, reality. Um, and James and I have spent. Um, some time reflecting on the different concepts at play um, in working from home, um, interviewing different people about their uh, experiences and also um, recording our own. And today we want to uh, share those experiences and those findings with you, um, but also ask you in the second part of this session to help us to build on them, uh, to bring your varied and no doubt intriguing experiences um, to the table. Um, all of which is sort of serving a longer term project to explore the topic of working from home, which will no doubt grow in importance and require uh, more extensive uh, critical analysis than it's ever received before. Um, so for this, uh, for this session, you might need, a, well, you will need uh, a pencil and a piece of paper or a digital version of that, um, if you don't have a, a, those analog things. Um, uh, so, um, try and get hold of that stuff. Um, but in the meantime, as I say, we're gonna share some of our findings with you. Um, working from home is something we're all hopefully doing now or doing something on the you know, work sort of area at home um, is, is happening right now. It's of immediate importance. Um, but to begin with, we just wanted to take a bit of a step back and say, or, and look at um, you know, what are the, the broad implications of, of working from home as opposed to going to an office. Jim, over to you. So, um, we wanted to start with a, a provocation. Um, we wanted to put it forward. Not that we think it's totally accurate at this stage, because we're definitely at the beginning of our kind of, of our research. Um, but we wanted to think about how work generally could be improved on a number of levels. So we want to put forward a provocation to everyone to get the ideas and the thoughts flowing, which is a kind of a, provo a provocation that works on three levels. Um, the social, the economic, and the environmental. So our provocation is that the physical workplaces and the work, practice, work practices intrinsically linked to them are socially discriminatory. So non-distributed non work is imbued with a number of discriminatory practices. Conceived of in this way, might these discriminations hold back these work operations from achieving their full potential? Some of these discriminations, innate discriminations of a kind of uh, co-located office, are uh, the mental health of workers, workers with dependents, 
gender identity, geographical limits, age and disability. The second part of our um, provocation is that um, centrally located or co-located offices are economically dubious. So the operation of workplaces is within a framework that looks to kind of calibrate for efficiency seems strangely, ex these office spaces seem strangely expensive and inefficient perhaps an overhead from a more certain economic time, and perhaps a time indeed when it made more sense for all workers to be co-located all of the time. And then off offices and commercial space is environmentally detrimental. So offices and office space have been a key configurator in urban spatial design throughout the 20th and 21st centuries, but perhaps times when Anthropocenic production was put at the heart of cultural economic activity within cities. In a context of climate emergency and mass housing crises the world over, carbon consuming offices and excessive work-based travel practices seem increasingly hard to justify. Um, so might the emancipation of the workplace lead to a sustainable return in the inner city? Um, so that's the provocation. So now we've got a little bit of theory, like a very simple theory that we're trying to put forward. Um, so since the communications revolution, digital workspaces have reduced our reliance on physical offices, but we still think before COVID-19, we still kind of feel like this tacit hierarchy exists where we have these multimedia office spaces on the network, and, and, um, but they still, there's still this feeling that kind of work is underpinned by a kind of a workplace. So the workplace sits on top of the network. But we want to analyse this paradigm shift and think perhaps about a future that flattens these hierarchies. So instead of having a workplace and network places, we just have a suite of workplaces, some of them physical, some of them digital. Um, so we don't see the exercise in our thinking today as like a massive kind of um, forward look into the future where we really think about futurology and kind of create a kind of radically new workplace and throw capitalism out the window. Today, we want to kind of frame people's thinking in relation to a chat with the us's of tomorrow. So if and when a kind of normality returns to work or a normality that maybe looked like the way it did a month ago, what things do we want back? But also what things might we want to change? And I think that's, that's, that's the space in which we want to begin and start thinking about this session today. Cool. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, J James talked about workplaces and uh, that's to say places that might be physical, might be digital. Uh, it doesn't matter and it doesn't matter where they are. Um, and we think this is a really exciting theoretical um, ambition, but to make that a reality or to start answering those questions in a, in a uh, meaningful way, um, we really need to examine what workplaces look like in practice, which of course means working from home. Um, in practice, it means working from home a lot of the time. And, and of course, now we have an opportunity and um, a wealth of data, um, which is in your guys' heads, uh, to examine that. Um, and really to, to uh, I guess, understand why um, working from my bedroom in my pants isn't as valid as working uh, in the office in my suit. Um, and, and really, we're kind of asking you guys to help us um, in that. Um, but before we get to the exercise we've designed, um, we wanted to unpack the two sort of concepts at play, uh, work and home, um, and therefore have a better grasp of the ideas and the, and the feelings at play as we try to combine them and synthesize them when we're working from home. So yeah, work and home feel like very distinct uh, places that we are in at very distinct times. And each of them, of course, have their own cultures within them, perhaps even defined in opposition to one another. So work is um, a place we go when we're not at home. Um, slide please, Jim. Um, so if this experience that we're all having now has shown us one thing, it's that work, being at work, is very much uh, tied to a time and a place. Um, and when we reflected on that, it kind of feels like you know, there's good reason for that, because if we think about the history of work, uh, of labour, 
um, that sort of starts in a field. Um, it moves to a factory um, uh, and then to, to an office space. Um, and we think also that sort of co-working spaces, whilst they might feel like a sort of domestic, domesticization of the, the, the office and the workplace, are actually kind of part of this heritage of a work, a workplace, a place we go to do work, which is different from the home. Um, and so the home, by contrast, on slide, the next slide, uh, is a place we go when we're, when we're not at work. Um, and that's to say it's a place which is firstly private, um, it's not the sort of public space of the office. Yeah, um, it, <laughs> Sorry. It, that's my, uh, <laughs> it's a space where we do things, uh, next slide, uh, like take all our clothes off and sort of admit that we're dirty as opposed to all the, the pomp and the, the politics and, and the sort of uh, purity, uh, if you like, of a workplace. Um, it's also a place on the next slide where, where kinship is more important than, than contract and governing relationships. Um, and, and lastly, uh, it's a place where, of course, we get up to all kinds of different profanities that, that would never happen at work except for maybe at, uh, at the Christmas party. Um, so work and home on the next slide are two distinct uh, times and places, each with very different cultures attached. And so when we talk about um, on the next slide, the, the greater connectivity that, that we're obviously, um, that we all have access to, um, the ability, uh, for example, to get uh, emails on my phone from work, um, the, the communications revolution that James referred to earlier, with that greater connectivity, we see those two kind of cultures, those two ideas coming together in a way, well, in the same time um, and place. Um, and that, uh, and for some uh, time, we've experienced that kind of uneasy overlap. Um, emails on my phone when I'm in the bath or having dinner, uh, working in my uh, bedroom in my pants and hoping I don't have to stand up, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so this sort of hierarchy still exists, these two different concepts exist and they're kind of smooshing together in this uneasy way. Um, and 2020 has really taken that whole thing to a new level. Um, I think in a lot of the interviews we've, we've conducted so far, um, it feels quite weird for many reasons to be working from home. It's evoking all these new and strange feelings and, and ideas and we really want to explore that uh, and continue doing so in this session and uh, again uh, into the future with some uh, um, further, further kind of follow-up stuff. Um, so really our question to do that is this for today. Um, how does working from home feel? Um, the data that we get out of this session will be really uh, important, not just not only in uh, recording the experience that everyone's having now um, for sort of posterity, but also um, to, to fuel the discussion uh, and analysis um, that, that will be had in the future. Um, so we're not just going to kind of open this question up to the, the floor. We've actually, as I say, already done a bit of uh, interviewing and, and recording already and found a number of different themes uh, in the discussion that we've had. Uh, and we want to use this session to explore those more, dig into them more with some fun and interactive exercises. James. So um, the, the, the way, because yeah, part, part of the Architecture Foundation pitch for the 100 Day Studio was this idea of um, interaction and obviously interaction on platforms like zoom is very hard because people can only speak one at a time and all that sort of stuff so the way we're going to do that is through a drawing and writing exercise so what we need everyone to do whether digitally or physically is to get a a piece of paper oh my my virtual background is going to go insane here <laughs> a piece of a piece of paper and fold it up as if you were um you know sending a letter into like a third and then fold it in half and then you get you get a piece of paper that's in six okay and then um basically you're going to number them and we need you to do this numbering quite accurately because it pertains to the questions that you answer so as you can see on the screen landscape format left to right left to right one through six so and then that's going to be your kind of response size and then on the other side we need you to write your job we don't need you want you to write your name we want you to write your job title and where your office used to be and where is your home. And if they're in the same city, maybe give us a region in that city. And that's, that's all we want in terms of kind of profile of user at the stage. 
Um, there's an email at the end of the presentation, and if you would like to, and we'd love you to, um, please email them to us at the end, and then we'll publish them, um, but we'll talk about that a bit later. So for now, one to six on that piece of paper um, relates to um, basically six themes that we're interested in, in, in exploring, and that they are then objective themes are all subjective themes. So that's why we want this kind of instantaneous feedback. Um, some of them are quite strange, some of them are quite fun, so don't overthink it. Um, okay, so over um, next, should I go to the next slide, Lee? Or is there yeah, well, the, the only other thing to, to say is we just we want to uh, pick on one uh, person uh, to um, share share their, their response um, as a as a way of, by way of um, you know just just kind of seeing. Uh, some some immediate responses, um, but also uh, if you want to comment on any of the ideas uh, in the comments bar, I don't know how to do that, but you might. Um, <laughs> <laughs> please. Do. Okay. Yeah. So um, if if we um, if we uh, maybe let Rosie be the person who can select someone at random, and yeah. if you and if you're select if you're selected at random and you really really don't want to just just shake your head vigorously, and we'll take that as a given and we'll move on. Okay, <laughs> we don't want to force anyone to mm. to contribute if they don't want to. So, um, okay, there's, great. There are six so, um, tasks, and we want to kind of spend five minutes on on each one. Um, so we'll give you. And we'll explain it. Give you a couple of minutes to to kind of write or draw in response to it, and then. Pick on pick on our, our poor um, unsuspecting respondent to share with the group. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the first um, one is um, rhythm. Mm. So, so go for it, Lee. Go for it then. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, we as I said, we did some. We've done quite a few interviews, and one of the big themes that came out was this uh, this this one of rhythm. Um, clearly, we've established a very strong sense of of temporal structure um, in going to a workplace. Um, uh, Jim uh, raised the point that the great Marxist Henri Lefebvre observed <laughs> the rhythms of the urban environment, um, which of course Dolly Parton eloquently describes in her song Working Nine to Five. Um, but um, the, the point is that we do have this very strong sense of rhythm throughout our day. Um, and now in experiencing this more decentralized workplace or these workplaces, um, which are in the same time and place as our home, those rhythms are being a bit uh, upset. Um, and so, yeah, we wanted to ask the question, how has working from home affected your sense of time passing and the structure of your daily experience? Um, which is a big question, um, but we wanted to reduce it into a uh, doable task. So uh, the idea is that we want you to draw two lines uh, representing the rhythm of your day um, within box one. Um, however you want to do that, whether, whether the old working day is a different colour, and we want you to, 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 to linearly represent um, the rhythm of the working day you left. And then we also want to, you to linearly represent your current working day now, it's like a, a typical work day. And it's important that we can, when we receive the data back, we can analyze the kind of qualitative aspects of those two lines, okay? Now if I take us off present, apparently I, we can all see the grid of us, of us doing this, is that right? Um, how do I do that? Hold on. If you stop sharing your screen and then it'll go back to the... Yeah, that old chestnut. <laughs> um, Turn to meeting. Okay. Hey. Look at all these amazing people. Hi everyone. Who have we got? We've got see some shout outs, should we? Can 
a piece of paper. <laughs> my, uh, my one little partner's just stuck into the room to get some paper, so she might even be on board. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there she is. She's on a um, desert, desert island somewhere. <laughs> Shout out to all the people I share a studio with. Kessia, Karen, hi. Or used to share a studio with. <laughs> Shout out to any of the Maud students. Thanks for coming on line. All right, how long have we had? I think we had about few minutes. Do, do, well, should, let's should we should move on. Yeah. yeah. Do we want to ask, do we want to uh, find our first uh, respondent in the... Yeah, in the and, and even if you're not responding and, you, and, and you've done it, just let's, let's see it on the screen and then we can pick someone to... Uh, mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> Okay, cool. Well, this is why we. Oh, wow. Wow, well, that's a nice one. Right, Rosie, over to you. Should I, should I unmute someone to talk about it? Or yeah, do yeah, I'm going to do it Okay, um, Kitty Newman. Kitty. Hi. Kitty, social media extraordinaire. Wow, I'm so excited to be chosen. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you mean to say about my lines? Yeah, talk about your lines. About your lines. <laughs> well, I actually drew my lines quite similarly to each other, but the second line was quite a lot taller. Like it's more intense, but it follows a similar rhythm. But I work from home a lot already anyway before, but then I used to travel to London a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my lines are like... Let's see them. I don't know if you'll be able to see it though either. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's more of like a kind of, there's, there's, they're spikier. Yeah, because people want a lot yesterday. Uh. <laughs> 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 or half the price. Uh, <laughs> on, the, on the thing, on the grid. Amazing. Cool. Well, thanks, thanks very much, Kitty. Thanks for your Back on mute. Okay, so, oh, so, oh, question two. Question two. Because oh, oh, then again. Um, sorry, this is a bit, um, <laughs> a bit less smooth than we would have liked, but you know, that's like, um, I keep on losing Zoom. Oh, there I am. Uh, share screen, uh, Google Slides. Present. Performance. Nice. Performance. Yes. The office space is a bit like a stage. Um, we call it performance because uh, we, of course, perform in lots of different ways when we're, when we're in the office space. Um, so if you think about uh, a really important meeting, uh, we might dress up and book a big room and, you know, bring in different props like some horrible sandwiches just to show how um important this meeting is um so the performance of work is really important um to our successes um to our careers uh, and everything else um and the office space is, is that that stage um and without that it kind of i think for a lot of people feels like what they're doing kind of goes unseen their, their performance is, uh, happens in the in the dark and so uh, we wanted to ask what have you done that you wish your colleagues could have seen? Invent an award for yourself. So you want... Out badge, whatever it, you know, something, something like that. Yeah. Is it, is it, is it a gong or is it a scout badge? A, a, <laughs> you decide. And you don't, don't feel if you don't have the drawing skills, you need to necessarily draw this one, but you know, yeah. a bit of description and a bit of, um, but I think I think this is quite interesting, and and having designed sort of um, kind of incubator spaces all over the world, and this idea of having a a place where you can perform work, I think is really interesting. 
and in a context or this, this kind of semi-future we're inventing where that doesn't exist um those infrastructures of performance become quite interesting i think and so we're hoping that maybe from understanding what awards you want we can understand the kinds of performances that people want to give mm. maybe we can re-engineer space to work to those performative aspects that people think are important to themselves it could be anything from tea making to um you know bringing in the big client Philip saying, more money, more pay. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the place for revolution, Philip. <laughs> what disciplines do we have? I'm, I'm amazed at the turnout. I've never, I've never seen a Zoom with two pages of people. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. I thought we'd get four people. I was, I was going to be happy with four people. <laughs> At least two of which wouldn't have been related to me. <laughs> All right. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Rosie, over to you. Let's turn. Um, okay, I'm going to go to the second screen. <laughs> oh, wow, the second screen. Uh -oh. um, okay, uh, Ketsia, Harper. Ketsia. Hello. Hi. Um, I've given myself the award for uh, best working from home outfit, and the award <laughs> is a little crown that you can wear. To improve your outfit even more, because I've come up with some really cracking outfits since I've been working from home. <laughs> uh, does it? Does everybody follow the um, Instagram WFH fit? Um, it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, do you think? Do you think uh, when you've worked in the office environment, Ketsia, that you do have to look different, and do you think it affects the way you work? Um, yes, I have to be. Uh, more formal and less fun and it just makes me less happy <laughs> useful it's good to know okay great thanks very much um oh share screen okay our third so we're halfway through the exercise everyone then you can go have your lunch our third idea Oh yeah, identity. Uh, so, um, obviously, coming together in the office is a really important place to to find one identity as a group, um, uh, a workplace as opposed to multiple different workplaces that we all exist in individually. So, uh, essentially, all that crap in your office, all those things stuck to the walls, they're all symbols of this of this shared. Uh, uh, sense of identity they're a key part of self-identification um, contrast that with zoom or, or hangouts or skype it feels like a very anonymous and anonymizing um, space um, and so we wanted to ask um, we're trying try to kind of get get a better sense of what that really means by asking um, what's the what's the most fun you've had with your colleagues in the last month um, using the language of the, the universal language of the emoji. <laughs> if you could give us a hand-drawn emoji of just how much fun or not 
you've had to... <laughs> yeah because we, we we kind of have been talking often a lot about um the office is like an axis mundi so like a space where group identity can be cultivated um and now that doesn't exist there are certain infrastructures and, and maybe platforms that we all have to kind of cultivate new identities around and some of those work really well some of them don't <laughs> but maybe maybe forced backgrounds is, is a way that this is my first ever um it's really stuff. nice yeah <laughs> that's never use of a background <laughs> There's, there's going to be some great drawers on this as well. Who else do we have? Got Jamie? Salome? Now, interestingly, I, try, I, try, I tried my best to reach out to people with kids to help me with this one, but none of them, would, <laughs> none of them wanted to be. <laughs> Got lots of young people. Maybe, so that's an Ingrid I know. I know she has kids. Uh, a kid. Oh, we've got Tom Greenall online. Shout out to Tom. Eloise is on, who has a really amazing working from home desk. I've seen it. <laughs> Only a picture of it. We've got some people from continental Europe, Salome Bernstein, Francesca, only in London. <laughs> All right, we're good. Does so everybody feel like they've written, they've given their, their emoji justice? Uh, also, feel, you know, feel free when you email back through your responses, you know, you can, you can add on, on Photoshop, whatever platform available, you real emojis, you know. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Eloise Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm in a team of three people and I started my job the day before the working from home thing was announced. So I've met them in person as, a, as an employee once um, and we don't have that much fun so that's my emoji. <laughs> Is it awkward? It's not awkward, I think it's probably really it's easier because there are so few of us, so I'm not having to deal with like multiple people needing things from me. Um, and luckily my boss, the founder of the company, is incredibly energetic and enthusiastic. So actually he makes our video calls quite, I mean, in that way, maybe my emoji is not right. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like, that's not fun. He is a fun person. We're not having fun together. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, well, that's an important distinction. Is it, do you think it's hard to cultivate fun in their natural way online yeah i think so um dave my sister's boyfriend has had like uh the equivalent of chat roulette and he just says it's awful like coffee cof teammate coffee roulette where you end up having to have like coffee with a random colleague and he's just said it's the most awkward thing he's ever done <laughs> that sound good any any thumbs up for that idea <laughs> <laughs> <Not too fun. laughs> But that's interesting. So, so I, they're, they're physical places because they don't actually have a force. You know, they they kind of maybe program less. Feel like you could naturally generate fun or or any kind of interaction within them. Whereas all of these interactions that we're having now are totally they're kind of planned and structured. Yeah, exactly. And that's like that's a buzzkill for any kind of fun, isn't it? Really. Um, yeah, and like the less, and I think it would be less awkward. He was just saying, like, obviously, it's trying to cultivate that randomly bumping into someone in the tea room whatever where you could actually have a five-minute conversation or longer that would end up being quite interesting but when it's 
enforced, suddenly there's just a lot of awkwardness. Great. Well, thanks. That's useful. Useful info. Yeah. Um, okay. Great. Thanks, Eloise. Oh, thanks, Eloise. <laughs> uh, so, how, okay, nearly halfway through. Broken the back of this thing, then you can all go and have your lunch. Um, so, uh, trust. Yes, trust. Uh, there's a lot of paranoia and guilt out there at the moment. Um, uh, you know, how, how can I trust other people when I can't see them, um, you know, just kind of around? Um, and, and how can I feel trusted? Um, there's an element of sort of panopticism at play for the, for the Foucault fans. And we are now kind of out of that panopticon. Um, and so there's this sort of issue of, you know, I'm, I'm totally disorientated when it comes to trusting the people I need to trust to get the, the, my job done and, and live my life nicely. Um, and there's also a kind of related question, which is perhaps the most sort of personal one, uh, which is how do I know, given that the standards of the office that usually constrain my behaviours aren't in place, how do I know that what I'm doing is a trustworthy thing? So do I have to sit at my kitchen table all day? Otherwise, I'm kind of should feel guilty about it. Or can I go and work in the bathtub or whatever I want to do? Um, so it feels like trust and, and knowing or kind of navigating this new world in a trusting and trustworthy way is a really difficult thing to do. And so, um, and uh, bear in mind, this will all be anonymous in the end, but you might get picked to share it. Uh, is there anywhere you've worked in the past month that you'd feel really embarrassed about your colleagues knowing about? Draw us a picture of this space. I mean, there are a limited number of places you can actually work. There's not that many. <laughs> but, you know, it's always possible uh, to feel embarrassed about. And, and, and maybe if a space is hard to draw or conceive mm. of in terms of this idea of trust, mm. maybe it's something that you've done to help, like to help you work, whether that's a kind of break you've taken or something mm. that you, or, which you, which you would maybe feel uncomfortable communicating that you've done that, potentially even if it's been an improvement in working practice. Um, yeah, that's a good, a good point. And often it is, and this kind of relates to the next topic we're going to talk about but it, it relates to that sense of kind of monotony of the of the day um but breaking that kind of seems to be a source of kind of confusion and guilt <laughs> oh stop sharing let's see the group of people We, we, I, I was speaking to um, a landscape architect friend the other day and, and, and she was telling me that her boss loves the new, the new mode in which people are operating and it feels like they might never ever go back, whether that's true, but it could be that people might feel more empowered now and some people might not. Um, I find that quite interesting as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we feel like we've had enough time? Who's still drawing? Drawing the kind of detailed drawing of embarrassment and shame. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Rosie, Chief Selector. Um, okay, um, Francesca. <laughs> hey, Francesca. Oh. Oh. oh, I just unmuted you. Thank you. Actually, when you unmute me, I mute myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, well, uh, this is my drawing. <laughs> Basically, I realized like, um, I don't know, I still don't know if it's acceptable to eat and smoke and drink during the call. <laughs> so, I realized like, if they could, the other people on the other side of the screen could smell and kind of uh, all the smells that are going around when I'm, even my personal one, because maybe I haven't showered that day. And so that's, that's the most embarrassing. The place is my physical condition of smells and eating and food and drinking and oh yeah brilliant yeah 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 we haven't got a theme on smell but that's a great one <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah my showering practices have have greatly reduced since since the uh, introduction of covid19 it's another dimension of the <laughs> negative environmental impact of going into the office <laughs> consumption etc no but i think it's it's definitely true i know uh in the creative industries there's probably a higher incidence of, of of people smoking so it's you know it's great for that i i guess <laughs> um, <laughs> being able to smoke and work um but cooking as well and more universal things but also i think that was one of the things i always disliked at work was when um People worked so hard they feel like um, they had everyone had to lunch our desk go and then and then you're having to share in the food habits of so maybe so maybe maybe it's fine you know I wouldn't yeah. mind if you were you know smoking a Cuban and eating a um, eating a curry and drinking a whiskey if I couldn't smell it you know <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you very much Oh, What's share the screen. One? Sorry. Share, share the screen. Okay. Drum roll. Penultimate. Um, there we go. Trust. And the fifth one is variety. Um, so uh, we talked at the beginning about rhythm and the kind of temporal structure of the day. Um, but this one is sort of more about the qualitative aspects of, of our daily experience when we're going to work. Um, so if we think about that tonally, it's kind of a range from um, sort of monotone to polyphone. Um, it's kind of like super one dimensional to something much more, more varied. Um, and really this is just coming from people saying, I spend this, you know, all day on Zoom <laughs> or whatever it might be <laughs> platform, but essentially it's the same quality of experience throughout the day, which is actually, really exhausting and so the variety of the, the of experience in the office where I can have those corridor conversations or I can um, you know pick up the phone or have a meeting you know it's actually a kind of fun house of different experiences um, and that I think is perhaps something we uh, maybe didn't think about as much before uh, the experience we've all had over the last few few weeks and so um, we wanted to understand a bit more about this this idea of sort of quality and, and tonalities of experience um, because well one particularly interesting dimension is that this really when we're uh, not in the same physical space boils down to to media and the media we use to to interact with uh, with one another um, and so yeah our, our question is how varied is the experience of working with others during the day when you're working from home. Tell us the range of media you, you use or have you know, recently used to interact with your colleagues. So say over the last, over the last week, um, how many different kinds of media have you used? Um, and our, our kind of one, one example we sort of talked about when we, when we kind of started chatting around this theme was, you know, is there now a place for media like a fax machine, which is a uh, sl you know, potentially slower, more kind of human um, form of long distance media than say an email or a, a Zoom call? Is there a role for post that maybe didn't exist before? So different speeds and qualities of, um, of, in of, of media, of mediation feel, um, feels like a really 
intriguing area to explore more. So yeah, what are the different, different uh, media you've used? I think, we're, I think we're there with that. Yeah, I reckon. Um, okay. Um, Take it away, Rosie. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Phil Christie. Okay. Um, well, um, mostly Zoom, um, but Instagram and WhatsApp and email. But um, I'm. But your question is strange because. Uh, I assume most people that were are on in the meeting here are architects. Is that right? Uh, I think got... a good mix of different um, different industries, different different kind of disciplines. Um, Do we? Yeah. I think yeah. We try to expand our reach a bit. Good. <laughs> okay. And um, because um, the interaction is important, but you know, also just the work. You know, just getting the work done. Mm you know, like sitting at your desk and doing whatever it is, um, is, um, well, I mean, I guess that's not your question, but um, I think at home you, you maybe can get it done better because you have, you're, you can um, control the distractions that you, you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you, there's, there's, there's an ability to disappear a bit as well, I think. Which, mm -hmm. which we're becoming, I think, increasingly scared of in kind of collaborative culture where people want to know where everyone is all the time, but head down, head down time is increasingly hard to find, I think, in office space. Yeah. So that's a good point. Mm. Cool. Good. Well, thanks very much. And to the last task. Uh, so, resource. Oh yeah. Um, yes. So we we talked a lot about kind of what what working from home is like and and the kind of experience there and what what's on offer there. Um, but the office. Um, of course has a lot of stuff in it which does sort of physically uh, technologically whatever else make work easier and, and more enjoyable um, and so that if we think about the example of a, of a proper workshop and James this is one we we talked about there are lots of tools there that are organized for everyone to use everyone's trained in using them you can do stuff there that you can't do uh, elsewhere um, 
And of course, you can access expertise that, that is around the, the kind of workshop space. And an office um, is a little bit like that. And so whilst it's great that we all have things like Zoom and the, the G Suite, uh, there are some more uh, resource-based or, or mechanical aspects of those things that, that it might lack. Um, and so our question to, to kind of explore that was, what do you miss about the stuff in your office that helps you do your job better? Um, so Eloise obviously has her amazing home desk, um, so she doesn't miss that. Um, but um, it might be something else. It can really be anything. So we want you to draw a space or object that you would love to have uh, that would improve your current working environment at home. Um, no stipulations on whether it's imaginary or not, you know, whether it's, it's the real thing or not. And this is really just to get at the sense of, okay, well, what role is there for physical office? Um, you know, the, the things that can't be sort of distributed very well, readily at the moment. And it's interesting that there's a few people who I can see on the call who are um, what you might call contemporary digital nomads. Um, <laughs> so for those of you who feel like it might not apply, maybe there's, is there something about resource which existing in a kind of um, what you might call a small freelance state? might be beneficial for you to have you know um, access to All right, Zach. Great. So, yeah. I'm mindful of time, so we should. Yeah. Um, we need to wrap it up imminently. I'll wrap it up. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yasin Abed. Oh, hey, Yasin. Hello. Hey. Hello. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm I'm a student. I'm an architecture student. So. I think mine are a bit obvious. Uh, <laughs> sure, basically, mo big, big, big model making space and big printers. It's so anything big that cannot fit in the house that architecture students need. I do not have, and do miss a bit. Otherwise, li library. Well, I was I was about to write library, but um, actually, there's some pretty good online resources. There's a Facebook group, a French Facebook group that's emerged called. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but they share, it's basically they, since the coronavirus crisis, they've uh, sort of called for everyone to just share PDFs of any architecture book they have. And now they've just, this Facebook group has just got thousands and thousands of like really important PDF, like architecture construction PDF books and stuff. So yeah, I don't miss the library. Uh, but yeah, big, big printer, I think that's the main one. Yeah, that's it. Scale. Okay. Cool. Thanks, expense, I guess. Expensive big stuff. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah. I know, I, and we've also got um, one or two people who work in fashion here, so you know, mm. literally can't do much. <laughs> um, okay, thanks. I oh. think really good. We've got to wrap it up. So we just want to give you the last slide to show, to talk about how we can collate and. Um, and begin to continue this conversation. 
Um, so Lee. Yeah. Yeah. This is called a, this is part of what we're calling an open source research project. Um, so we would love it if you guys could share your sheets with us um, that, that we've been creating over the last hour. Um, they're going to be full of really cool, fascinating, amazing stuff that just adds a whole lot of richness to what are currently hypotheses. Um, we want to put them on our cool Instagram, uh, which has zero followers at the moment. So follow <laughs> that. Um, we want to use that as a site for uh, keeping that data set and also uh, discussing it. Um, and then we're going to do a Google Drive uh, thing to start to analyze and publish thinking around that. And who knows what it could end up uh, being in the future, something to discuss and to uh, wherever we are as well. So yeah, send us your sheets at that email address, info at idk o dot com um and um yeah watch uh, follow us on instagram and watch space yeah and if when, yeah. when you when you send your sheets through please please indicate if um with whether you you mind or don't mind yeah. your your instagram handle or your name being kind of published on instagram otherwise and or you know just don't send it if you don't want it published <laughs> um Actually, no, please do send it, but indicate if you want to publish it, because it'd be great for us to see it, because it's so great that we've had like nearly 50 people on this call, it's totally unexpected, so it's going to really push the thinking forward a bit, and um, yeah, so thanks very much everyone for coming today, it's, real, it's been a real treat. Yeah, yeah thank you so much, and um, enjoy your afternoons.